Hey maker, Emily here, otherwise known as that mom with a laser. And in my last video, I showed you guys how to use Lightburn software to cut oversized objects with your pass-through on your laser. So to bring this full circle with you, I'm coming back to show you how I turned my 75 inch mermaid tail into the most fabulous mermaid party prop Ever. In this video, I'm going to show you how I painted this ombre effect and how I made this very tall and unbalanced prop stand. So are you ready? Let's go. So in the last video, you saw me cut out the tail to my mermaid. Here I'm finishing up the rest of that job by cutting out the scales. I really wanted to make this double layered to give it a little more of a pop. Here you see me using blue painter's tape so that I can take out all of the pieces at once from the laser. I wanna keep them in their slots so that I can sand them down. And I like doing it this way because it helps keep it all together and I don't have to hold each piece as I'm sanding. Now. Back to the blue painter's tape. There is a feature in Lightburn called tabs that would allow you to tab your pieces so they don't fall out. But I personally prefer to do it this way and I like to use the tab feature when I'm cutting out small pieces, maybe like the dot to an eye. Because otherwise when you break off the tab, there's like a little, you know, there's a little part that you're gonna have to sand off. And by using my blue painter's tape, I don't have to do that. Now here you see me using Kills All Purpose Primer um, for plywood and I want to give a shout out here to Dave Taylor if you're not familiar with him. He is a very skilled sign maker and his go-to specifically when he's working with um, plywood is this for a primer. So that's what I'm doing. I'm applying two coats all over all of my pieces. Here you see me using my roller to also prime the edges of my coral. And I'm gonna use that little foam brush there in the back to get into the little crevices that I can't get the roller into. Here's an example of what it looks like if you don't prime the edges. I have these tiny pieces that I made for table decor and I was being lazy. I didn't feel like priming it with a little tiny brush, so I just left it. And here you can see the results of my laziness on the top. Uh, you can see how it was really hard for the paint to take to those laser cut edges, whereas on the bottom that was primed, um, the paint covered it beautifully. Once it all dried, I lightly sanded everything, removed all of the dust, and then it was almost ready to do the fun part and paint. However, I had to go back and fix a big mistake that I made in the process. And I did the one thing that you're never supposed to do, and that is delete a file you haven't saved before you're even done cutting all the pieces. <laughs> So I had to go back into the file and try to stretch it exactly to the way that I had cut the back of the tail. And uh, thankfully I got close, but it wasn't spot on. So here I'm doing a dry fit to see where are the most noticeable parts that did not line up perfectly. The most noticeable part was by the fin. So to fix that, I just took wood putty and I filled in that score line that I created. Um, again, kind of lazily, cause this was for me. If I had to fix this for something that I was selling, I would have gone over it with two coats of putty and sanded it twice. Um, but it did the job as you can see here, once it was uh, painted. So the last thing I needed to do was glue my pieces on and then I could finally start painting. My go-to honestly for gluing is wood glue, but I was all out and I had this stuff on hand, which is called Starbond. It worked pretty well. Um, I did have a couple of pieces that were bowed that kept that fell off like twice and I had to re-glue them, but whatever, you get the point. Glue your pieces on and let's move on to the fun part and spray paint with an ombre effect. Okay, so I have decided I, I wanna test it first on a piece of scrap, see how this whole, you know, ombre effect is gonna work. And I'm gonna go in this pattern, pink, teal, purple, that way I have P, 
pink and purple next to each other in the ombre effect. Let's see how this is gonna go. Purple splattered a lot. It was a strong purple. Mm. Okay. Well, so I need to shake my purple more because it's doing this splatter that I don't like. But this is why we practice. Okay. I think I can pull it off, but let me shake my purple paint a little more. So very quickly, I started to notice that the purple paint for whatever, it was just being more stubborn. So you see me kind of spraying the purple on, then going back over it with the color that I, uh, you know, that it's overlapping. In this case, it was the green color so that it kind of, you know, I basically repainted over the green color to cover the large splatter spots from my purple. So I'm kind of going back and forth while the paint is still wet so that it mixes all together. You'll also notice that I'm spray painting from two different angles. That way I can ensure that I'm getting the paint into the grooves between the two layers, you know, the back and the bottom layer and the top layer. So I go from the back side and then from the front. And then again, taking whatever color I'm trying to blend and repainting that as well. See here, I got that <laughs> purple splatter there. So I'm covering it up yet again. And I'm trying to do this quickly so that I can work with the paint while it's still wet, because when it's wet, that's when that the paint starts to blend and create that ombre effect that I am going for. Look at the splatter there. Ah, this is me panicking because it's annoying.
All right, so I am very happy about what I see here. It's looking great and I couldn't expect it to look any better. With that said, I do really wanna try this stuff. It has mixed reviews. I have people actually in my Facebook group that tell me it's great, they love it, and then I have people that say it's a pain in the rear end. And this, I feel like it's one of those things that I'm just gonna have to try it myself to really know how I feel about it. And if I could get glitter all over my mermaid tail, it would be freaking adorable. So. I'm gonna shake this thing like crazy, and then we're gonna see how this goes. Are you ready? Let's go. <laughs> okay, I've shaked it like crazy. I did like a little spritz on the cardboard. It looks good, looks good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. Let's try it. Ay, ay, ay. Here we go. Oh wait, I gotta record it with my phone too. You know how that goes. Okay, here we go. Oh my goodness, it's so good. Okay, nothing is clogging just yet. Oh my goodness, I love it. Ah, so pretty. Oh my gosh, that was so quick and easy. And let's see if I can get a close up. Oh my gosh, I just sprayed this and I wasn't recording anything. Look at that. Oh my goodness, I love it. All the glitter. Oh my goodness. My beautiful mermaid tail. It's awesome. That went really well. Much better than I expected. Now I did read, I, this is, hold on. So I have read that if you wanna keep using it and not waste it, store it upside down so that Oh, spray it upside down, I read somewhere, so that you can get the glitter out of the, the hose thingy and store it upside down so that it stays clear. I guess the paint comes down and then glitter doesn't fill up in the straw. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I've also read if you need to loosen it to put it in warm water. So for this application, it worked great but I'm not gonna paint the coral until tomorrow, so I'm hoping this will still work tomorrow. I'll let you guys know how it goes. Then the last thing to do was create a base for this massive tail, which was a little awkward because not only was it tall, but it curves, you know, at the fin. So I needed something that was gonna be really sturdy, really strong, especially considering, you know, this is gonna be at a little kid's birthday party. There's gonna be kids running around it. So I created a T-slot for this, and I ended up using two sheets of a quarter inch wood. I glued them together. Actually, I used 3M double-sided adhesive to attach them, and that did the trick. It was very sturdy and very stable.
All right, guys, so the weather is not in my favor right now. It's raining, but we're hoping it's gonna clear. In the meantime, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this name that I cut out and I'm gonna hang it over there. All right, so what I'm, how I'm gonna hang it, I'm just gonna take fishing line and I'm gonna probably put a piece here and a piece there to hang it up. Actually, I think I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Can you tell me if it's level? No. Ah, uh, oh, I know. Okay, that's not what I got. Well, laser friends, wasn't that a ton of fun? I had such a blast with this project and I can't wait to work on the next project that I have up my sleeve with you guys. If you're new here, my name is Emily. I'm known as that mom with a laser. I'm also the brand ambassador for Eon Laser USA and I would love for you to stick around. So if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do so and hit that bell button so you get notifications every time I have a new video. And with that, I look forward to seeing you here soon over at that mom with a laser. Bye guys.